Give me a better combination than books and food. I'll wait. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel today. I'm filming a video that I've been planning for quite a while and I'm very excited to do. And as you can see from the title of the video, I'm gonna recommend you books about food or books in which food feature prominently. So I asked on Twitter, I think a while ago, my um, not Twitter, Instagram a while ago, my Twitter and my Instagram both linked in the description. I'm very active over on both platforms if you fancy seeing more of what I get up to and also helping decide video ideas because I asked on Instagram a while ago if there were particular videos people want to see from me and I'm really sorry because I need to start writing it down to who suggested ideas uh, but somebody asked for a book a video uh, recommending books about food so here we are it's now like three months later and I'm finally making the video so I've got 12 books to talk about some are what you would traditionally think of when you think about books and food um, and a couple are less obvious <laughs> So we're going to go through those together. Um, I the One of the other reasons I'm excited to make this video, not just because it was requested, but because as you can see from the state of my bookshelves where I've pulled all these books out, I love a book that features food. It's one of those buzzwords. It's like found family. I just want to pick it up and read it immediately. If someone says, oh, there's really good food descriptions in that book, I'm like, give it to me, put, you know, inject it straight into my eyeballs, all of that kind of stuff. Give me that book. I want to read it now. I think it's the same um, reason that I love the found family trope is because it just makes it feel super cosy. Um, I'm a big foodie in my real life outside of books. I am, as my friends will tell you, I'm very food orientated. If you want me to do something, promising snacks at the end is a good way to get me to do it. Um, I love to eat. I love food. I love cooking. Um, I do enjoy baking, but I'm terrible at it. So I like watching people make, like living vicariously through other people. Um, and for me, it's just one of those like joys of life is food. So yeah, let's go through these 12 books. We're going to start with three that are about food. Um, but probably not what you thought you were going to get when you came to this video. Unless you've been watching my channel for a while, you can probably guess what the first book might be uh, when I say that these are books about food, but not in the way you might consider. Uh, so the first one I'm going to recommend is Tender as the Flesh by... Oh, as good, oh I cannot speak today. Ag Augustina, there we go, Basta Rica. This is a book about cannibalism, and you might be able to tell from this cover. Um, this is one of my favourite books of all time. So hi, if you're new here, welcome, come on in. This is the kind of content you're going to get. Um, I read this during 2020 at the height of the pandemic and was completely blown away by how stunning the writing is. Um, she's got another book being translated from Portuguese um, this year and I don't think we've ever pre-ordered a book so fast. I was so excited when I saw the announcement. Um, and yeah, we are in a world where animal flesh, you can no longer consume animal flesh because all animals have a virus that kills humans. Um, and so we are about 20 or 30 years since forward from that point. And society has legalised the production of human meat. So it's legalised um, humans being bred and bred only to be eaten. Um, and it's a real, it's an obvious kind of comment on the meat industry on um being a meat you know being carnivores and the kind of ethics of that it's also at its core and I always say this to people to me it's actually a book about loneliness we're following one man whose name I have forgotten Marco Marcos Marcos um who works in a slaughterhouse he's in charge of a slaughterhouse he's a manager there and obviously the animals that they are slaughtering are humans um, and he's very deeply lonely and one day he is brought as a gift from a supplier he has brought a female head like a, a whole person not just literally the head um, and he has to decide what to do with her and it's incredibly dark obviously like it's probably one of the darkest books I own uh, there is a lot of horror in it a lot of body horror it gives new meaning to the word to the phrase finger food if you know you know um, but I just loved this so much and it's an interesting look at what we consume. So I had to put this in. I thought I'd put this in at the beginning. We're going to kind of work through. I've got three that are food related, but in a darker way. And then we've got a couple of kind of one literary fiction. And then we're getting to the kind of cuter stuff. So yeah, this is the darkest of the books. Highly recommended only if you can deal with the content. Obviously, it's very, very dark. Um, but I had, to, I had to put this in. As soon as I got the video idea, I was like, oh, so as soon as I saw the request come up, I was like, I'm going to have to put in Tender as a Flesh. 
so there we go okay the next book um is also about food but also has a kind of darker edge to it this is the sin eater by megan campisi can we just enjoy this cover now i haven't reread this since i read it the first time which i think again was in 2020 this was one of the first books that i was sent um by book break as part of pam mcmillan um to review and i was very excited about it because i mean it's beautiful anyway uh so it kind of has some sentimental value to it for me as well but this is based on the um, historical practice of sin eaters. Um, and in this world, we're in a kind of alternative Tudor London. Uh, we have Queen Bess on the throne, who is very clearly a reference to Queen Elizabeth I. Um, and we're following, again, what was her name? Uh, May, who is forced to become a sin eater. Uh, she is, this is done as a punishment. She steals a loaf of bread one day because she's starving. She's caught and her punishment is to become a sin eater. And a sin eater is someone who eats the sins of the people that are dying. So um, she is made mute. She's not allowed to talk. Nobody is allowed to talk to her. Uh, when somebody is dying, so when a rich person knows they're dying, they call for this, they kind of summon the sin eater, the sin eater comes, that person confesses their sins, and then for each sin, there is a very specific food, which she then eats, and it's that symbolic idea that she is taking on their sins and carrying their sins inside her, and they are then free to die sinless and go to heaven. Um, and I found this really fascinating. I really want to reread this. I need to reread this soon. This is making me want to reread it. But what I really like is, is an alter like I said, alternative history, and there's also something, you know, weird is going on within the city um, and she's trying to find out, you know, uh, discover this kind of ring of murderers, but she's not allowed to speak and nobody's allowed to speak to her. So it was really interesting and really um, fascinating way of doing a murder mystery with this added element. Um, but it's got this list and you get these lists at the start of most um, chapters of what which food goes for which sin. So adultery is dried raisins. Uh, betrayal is a mutton chop. Um, blood sacrifice is hippocras. Uh, conspiracy is a brandy posset. Um, envy is cream. Um, lies is a mustard seed. Lust is rose hips, etc., etc. And I just found it a really fascinating way of looking at food, and this part of history. Sin eaters were a, a real thing, um, but not possibly to the extent that she um, creates in this book. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this one. So if you're looking for historical fiction connected with food, but with a slight edge to it. I would recommend this one. Next, we have Hungry Hearts, uh, which is edited by Elsie Chapman and Caroline Tongue Richmond. This is a collection of 13 short stories all focused around food. Um, and they are all focused around this imaginary town called Hungry Hearts, uh, which is this like street with loads of different um, places to eat on it. Let me find the map because it's really cute. Um, so it's this imaginary town with all the different um, places to eat on there. And like I said, it's got 13 stories in it um, from various different um, cultures and different food types and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, most of them are, some of them are cute. Some of them have got a real edge to them. One in particular took a turn that I was not expecting when I read it. So um, I really enjoyed this whole collection. And I feel like if you're looking for a short story collection to get into, but you don't usually read them, this would be a really good one. Um, and I thought it was fun. So I don't know that any of these people are particularly well known. Anne Marie Mecklemore is in here. Um but other than that they were for for me anyway, they were unknown writers. But I really enjoyed them. Um and this is a good mix of stuff in here. Like I said, some are cute, some have got an edge, some are sad, uh some are about, you know, things like grief. Um it says on the back here, a shy teenager attempts to express how she really feels through the confections she makes at her family's pastel pastelaria. Sorry if I said that wrong. A tourist from Montenegro desperately seeks a magic soup dumpling that could cure his fear of death. An aspiring chef realises that butter and soul are the key ingredients to winning a, winning a cooking competition that could grant him the money to save his mother's life. Welcome to Hungry Hearts Row, where the answers to most of life's hard questions are needed rolled bake. Baked. What's a typical, where a typical greeting is, have you had anything to eat? Where magic and food and love are sometimes one and the same. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. And again, this, this is going to make me want to reread all of these books. Okay, then I have a literary fiction to recommend, which was all over the book tonight, or has been all over the book tonight for the last year or so. One of my favourite books of last year. And that is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmes. Yes, this is my signed Toppings first edition. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, this is historical fiction in the 50s and 60s and we are following, is it Elizabeth? Yeah, Elizabeth Zott, who is a chemist 
but she is unfortunately a chemist in a man's world and so instead of um doing a chemistry show that she wants to do she ends up being pushed into doing a cooking show because you know she's a woman so she should put her apron on and get get behind the stove uh but she approaches it as a scientific um endeavor so she teaches women to cook based on chemistry and she becomes incredibly uh famous and popular and it's about her life this is also um very dark i think uh it kind of gets mismarketed because you have this bright, fun cover, and I do love this cover. But this book opens or starts with, towards the beginning, a very serious and quite graphic sexual assault and rape scene. So just be aware of that picking this up because I think a lot of people go into it not realising actually how dark some of the themes are. Um, it also deals with death of a spouse and grief um, and a few other kind of big topics. Molly's now about she's decided to get herself up from one sunny spot and move to the other sunny spot in her lounge uh so just be aware of that but this does obviously contain lots of descriptions of food and the kind of the science behind food which i found super super interesting so yeah definitely recommend that one next we have a book that i finished rereading recently and i will put the live show in the description in case you want to see it and that is act your age eve brown by talia hibbert i did sister along at the start of this year where we reread um, each of the three sisters and then like I said did live shows and stuff talking about them and Eve is the third and final um, brown sister and she's a chef uh, so in this book she is told by her parents that she needs to grow up she's in her mid-20s never really held down a job uh, she's told that they are going to cut her off for the next year and she needs to get a job and hold it down for at least a year before they will restart her allowance because they're a very wealthy family uh, she basically storms out after this conversation gets in her car uh, and just drives and she ends up um, outside Jacob's B&B um, and he happens to be interviewing that day because he needs a replacement chef uh, she wanders in uh, and he hates her on site and she hates him um, so she leaves and then he chases after her because he and his friend realize that actually she'll be a really good fit they need someone she's there and willing so his friend is like we need to go and get her back they go out to get her and in the kind of ensuing chaos she accidentally runs Jacob over and breaks his arm so she then has to stay on basically to um look after him whilst his arm is healing and help run the bnb &B. and it goes from there and it's you know it's a romance so you kind of know what's gonna happen um but she's a cook and she sounds like she's a blooming good cook she's definitely someone i want to like make me breakfast uh so you have lots of descriptions of the breakfast that she's making but also she bakes and all of that kind of stuff she talks about afternoon tea um so yeah woven into this lovely romance um is also some great descriptions of food so i had to put this one in here sorry molly is now doing her best to distract me by being super cute on the floor okay next i've got a graphic novel which is technically not about food but it's about drink so i'm including it because also it's super cute um and that is the tea dragon festival by k o'neill uh this is the second one the first one is the tea dragon society which is over there and there is a third one but i haven't read that yet because it's not out in paperback yet and i have the first two in paperback so i'd like to complete um the series in paperback uh and this is just the most gorgeous gorgeously illustrated beautifully written book about little tea dragons um and they grow tea out of their heads they're down here the tea dragons um and then you brew the tea and then each dragon has different kind of properties in their tea uh, so i adored this i find this series super cozy and just comforting and it's obviously you know fantasy so you've got all kinds of different creatures you've got a whole load of different um rep in here uh different experiences uh this one is more about kind of um family and that kind of feeling of loss that you get when as you grow up and you're kind of looking back on your childhood and yeah i just adore this series so i thought i'd pop this one in here plus it's a slightly different format to the others the others are all novels um and i thought yeah we'll have this one in here as well because it's it's just it's so pretty okay okay so i now have one we're about halfway through <laughs> i've got one ya then we're into a little bit of mid middle grade and then we're into the like properly cozy books the books that you came to this video probably expected me to talk about we thought we'd finish with those so uh first up the middle grade i've got uh, the middle grade the ya that i've got is with the fire on high by elizabeth acevedo i adore her writing i've read most of the things that she's put out there's a few i need to catch up on and again it's been a little while since i read this one maybe i'll reread this in the summer um, but we are following in this emoni i don't know if i've said that right um who wants to be a chef more than anything else but she is also a mother 
Um, she's a teenager, she's got a two year old daughter and this is about her finishing her last year of high school and trying to decide on her next steps. And one of the things I love about this, like, I literally couldn't have a video about food, books and food, food and books that didn't talk about this book because each section starts with a recipe, tells you how to do it um, and like food is just threaded all the way through this book. So if you like books about food and you haven't read this, you need to pick this up immediately uh because not only are there great descriptions of food it's elizabeth acevedo her writing is absolutely stunning um and this is um like i said it's about her kind of working out what she wants to do how she's going to balance being doing what she wants to do with being a mother it talks about her her relationship with the father of her baby um also about her relationship with her grandmother because they live with her grandmother her and her daughter live with her grandmother i loved all of that and yeah, this is just another absolutely fabulous book. And just again, look at that cover. I mean, I swear books about food have like the best covers, right? Okay, then I got a couple of middle grades and this is like a middle grade classic. It was not like a middle grade classic. It is a middle grade classic. And that book is um, A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Bennett. Um, in this, we follow Sarah who um, starts the book in India with her father, um, they're very wealthy and he is sending her to an English boarding school to finish her education. And when she first arrives, she is the wealthiest girl in the school. Um, and then partway through uh, the book, a telegram arrives to say that her father has died and she is completely penniless. So she goes from being the little princess in the school to um, being one of the servant girls. Um, and I love this story because it is all about how no matter what you have, you can always be kind. Um, and Sarah is not stuck up or horrible girl or anything like that. Um, she is very kind and very strong. Um, and yeah, I always enjoy this, but there is a particular scene. And if you've read this book, I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to give spoilers, but if you've read this book, there is one particular scene where there is a lot of food. And I love the way that scene's written. It's just magical. So yeah, I thought I would put this one in here. And again, another lovely addition. This is one of the penguin uh penguin classic editions i think that's what it's called um it's very pretty and yeah there is one particular scene that's about food and like i said if you know you know and if you don't know you should read this to find out okay then the other middle grade that i'm going to recommend is nevermore by jessica townsend and did i pull this out just so i could show you my hardback signed edition i mean maybe um where's the signature there it is ah. um i adore this series the fourth book is finally out this year and I'm very excited to do a reread of the first three in the trilogy um, and we're following Morrigan Crow. So Morrigan Crow is a cursed child. On her 11th birthday she is fated to die. Instead she is rescued by Jupiter North and taken to Nevermore. This is Jupiter North here, step boldly. Um, again, gorgeous cover. He is she is taken to Nevermore which is this magical society and she has to prove her worth basically in a series of trials and it goes from there. Um, and there are lots of lovely descriptions of food. She ends up living in this hotel uh, but the hotel has a mind of its own like the rooms keep changing you open a door one day and there's something there you open the same door the next day and there's something different there are lots of descriptions of food there's kind of lots of like um like midnight feast type descriptions which i really enjoy and like her bedroom will bring her what it thinks she needs as it gets to know her so i adore this series in general just for the kind of the magic of it and the adventure and the found family and Morrigan finding herself and all of that stuff but there are also some cracking descriptions of food in this which just put the icing on the cake for me and I will not apologize for that pun okay three left so we're now into the books that you might have expected to see me talking about when you clicked on this video the first one is the number two feline detective agency by Mandy Morton I've talked about this series quite a bit this is the first in the series uh, and we're in a world where everyone is a cat so everything else is totally normal. People go about their days, but everyone is a cat. And we are following Hetty and Tilly, who's our psych her psychic, as they start their feline detective agency. Um, I've read three books in this series. I've read the first, the second, and then randomly like the 11th, um, which is the one I started with. But um, I really enjoy these. They're just cozy detective stories. They are quite dark. They do catch me out every time with actually how dark they can be, uh, but much like me, Hetty is very food orientated and so there are always lovely descriptions of food. Her and Tilly live um, round the back of a bakery so there's always like cooking, baking smells, um, there's always descriptions of the food that they're getting. Sorry Molly's 
just being completely adorable over there now. Um, there's always descriptions of the food that they're getting from the bakery. There's always descriptions of their meals. And it, I just very much enjoy the food descriptions in here. So yeah, really recommend this one. Um, and even on the back of this, so it says, um, there's a whole description of like what they're doing, and, like the mystery they're solving. In a haze of catnip and pastry, Hetty steers the fur cross case to its conclusion. But will she get there before the body count rises and the pies sell out? So yeah, always really fun. So definitely that one. And then this is definitely a book you will be expecting from this video if you've been following me for any length of time. One of my favourite books of last year, possibly one of my favourite books of all time. I need to do a reread to check. Uh, but if you want food descriptions, Legends and Lattes has got you covered. Uh, in this, we are following Viv. She is a retired orc, a retired something orc. There's some description of barbarian orc. That's the one. Um, she's decided that she is tired of the barbarian life. She's going to hang up her sword and she wants to create a coffee shop, but she's doing it in a place where they don't know what coffee is. They've never heard of coffee before. Um, and it's literally about her building this coffee shop from the ground up. And I've heard, um, people saying that, that nothing happens in this book and that's a negative for them and they're right nothing happens in this book except that she builds a coffee house from the ground up um, and it's about the found family that she collects along the way and there is a little mouse who makes who bakes for her so there's loads of description of food you've obviously got the description of the coffee as well but she works out her and her business partner work out really quickly that actually um selling something to drink to eat along with the drink makes people stay longer and then they buy another drink and I just adored this so much. Um, I've got the very pretty um, blackboard edition. It doesn't have the sprayed edges with the uh, cinnamon buns on it. I am a bit sad about that, but never mind. And then on the inside, you've got the original cover because this was originally self-published and was then picked up and traditionally published. And yeah, I just really love this edition. I can't remember if there's anything. Oh yeah, it's very smart. So yeah, if you are looking for cozy found family with food, this is the book. Don't expect any big storylines though. It's literally just this calm, cute, cozy story about Viv and the people she kind of collects along the way. There's also a prequel called Bone Dust and Bookshops coming later this year. And again, I'm very, very excited for that. And then the final book in the stack is Chocolat by Joanne Harris. I read this a couple of years ago. I was really surprised how much I loved it. It was one of those books um, where... I felt like I should read it because it's a classic. It was kind of a modern day classic. I'd never read it, love the film. Um, so I kind of popped, popped it on my wish list and then somebody was kind enough to send it to me. And I picked it up with literally no expectations and then adored it. So we are following, is it Vian? Yeah, Vian, who moves to this tiny French village with her daughter um, and sets up a chocolatier, a chocolate shop. Um, but she does it just before Easter and this is a very religious town and it's about how she copes with that and how she gradually wins over most of the occupants of the town it's also got a little bit of um, magic in it sorry my cats are now about to start scrapping with each other i think jack molly's trying to sunbathe go away um sorry it, there's a little bit of magic in here it's very much about the healing nature of food it's about um taking care of yourself taking care of other people and yeah, just how food can kind of bring people together. So highly recommend this, particularly if you like chocolate, like the descriptions of it are just every time I was like, I'm, I'm going to need to eat chocolate whilst I read this book, because, you know, that would be just a terrible hardship to have to go through. So those are all the books. Let's hold them up. If I can, the stack is a little bit ooh, uneven. So these are all the books on my shelves that I can think of that I can recommend that have food in them. Um, tell me in the comments, leave me a comment, what is your favourite book about food? Because I'm always on the lookout for more recommendations. If it also has found family in it, then that's an added bonus. But books about food, I always enjoy. Uh, let's have, what should we have as the emoji of the video? Um, let's have, let's have a cake emoji, kind of for this. Because they, they uh, one of the characters in this, the little rat, basically invents uh, cinnamon rolls which are my one of my favorite things to eat so yeah leave a kind of baking something to do with baking a cake or a roll or something like that as the emoji so that I know that you got to the end if you have got to the end of this thank you so much because I've just been waffling for 25 minutes so yeah tell me your favorite books about food in the comments so I can help grow my tbr uh, leave a baking emoji of some kind a cake or a bun or whatever just let me know you got to the end please subscribe if you'd like more of this chaos and I will see you in the next one thanks everyone bye